to stare off into space until my wife says, lie. Oh, she just gave me a thumbs up, maybe. Now she's waving her hands. She doesn't know. You think so, or you know, you don't know. Okay, I am live. I am alive. We'll give it a minute, because, well, I don't want to talk to just my wife. Let's see if anybody else shows up. Even though my wife is not the only person in the room. Hope everybody's had a good afternoon. It's a little moist out there today, but the temperature was nice. Temperature was very nice. Everybody else is playing a puzzle right now. I'd get a guitar and play for you, but I really don't know how to play the guitar. I just held it the first night for fun. And we're gonna get started though. So, Tonight, I'll read a passage to you, and then we're going to pray. And what we're, what we're going to pray for tonight are the teachers uh, that uh, get to go back to work tomorrow, but to no students and learning how to do everything online. Uh, and then, uh, as well as the students who are trying to figure out how to learn how to do things online uh, and at home. And then to the parents who are going, I didn't sign up for this. I want my kids to go to school so that I can get a break. Uh, so we're going to pray for them as well. Uh, but first, let's read uh, Matthew chapter 26, verses 24. No, not to chapter, chapter 16. Matthew 16, verses 24 through 27. Then Jesus said to his disciples, <clears throat> Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. This passage has been one of my favorite passages for a lot of years, <clears throat> and it is a tough passage because it's not something that's easy for us to do because we're a selfish people. Uh, but to, to gain life, we must lose it. And so this week, as you're uh, going through your daily life and you're thinking about the quarantine life and all that's going on, uh, focus on emptying yourself and emptying your life of yourself so that you can be filled by God, so that you can experience that fullness. Now, I mentioned in our time of prayer, we're going to pray for, for teachers and students and for, for parents. And so let's do that now. Uh, and let's pray. Lord, thank you for your goodness and your mercy in our lives. Thank you for, for a smooth morning this morning with uh, our service, Lord. And thank you for all of those who viewed it uh, and are going to view it, Lord. We ask that you bless their lives. Lord, as uh, teachers in this area specifically get ready to, to go back to work tomorrow after a week of spring break, and, and they get to do it differently, Lord. They're not going to be in rooms with students. They're going to, to be at their computers and uh, doing things online uh, like they haven't done before, Lord. We ask that you give them guidance and uh, patience in those moments, uh, Lord, and the knowledge, uh, and that everything goes well, Lord, that they're able to communicate with students via the Internet and uh, help them uh, learn and grow so that they're able to uh, do the things that they want to do in the future, Lord. Lord, and with the students who are now uh, confined to doing work at home, as opposed to being with their friends and face-to-face uh, -face with teachers uh, so that they can see the response and, 
and know that they're getting what they're understanding. Lord, we ask that you uh, help them to understand the work that they've got to do, that you uh, give them the patience to do it and the ability to do it at home, Lord. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, sometimes it's hard just being alone and doing things alone. Uh, give, give these students the ability to, to get the work done uh, and get it done soon so that they don't have to worry about doing it all day long and that they can uh, have the freedom to do other things around the house or work uh, around town, uh, whatever they may be doing, Lord. And then we ask that you uh, be with the parents who are learning a new trade. Uh, and it's not so much homeschool as it is doing school at home, uh, Lord. And uh, uh, not all of us understand uh, math with letters in it and all of those different things, Lord. We just uh, give parents the patience uh, to be able to help their kiddos uh, and help the students. Uh, Lord, uh, you know everything that's needed in all of, all of these things with the parents and with the students and with the uh, teachers, Lord. Uh, just uh, be in control of it all. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, make it go easy. Make it go smooth so that there's not stress and frustration, Lord. Uh, but uh, uh, give patience where patience is needed and give understanding where understanding is needed, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done. Lord, we ask that you continue to be with those who are sick right now, uh, who need your healing, uh, not just from the virus, but from whatever they may be sick with. It may be another disease. It may be cancer. It may uh, be... Uh, dementia could be any number of things. Lord, we just ask that you uh, heal uh, and continue to be in control of all things. Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, we've been talking about my story. Uh, and, and a couple of days ago, we talked about salvation. Uh, and last night, we talked about baptism. Uh, and I highly recommend both of those. In that order, I recommend salvation and then baptism, uh, because baptism is a symbol of what God is doing in our lives. Uh, but then after that, what comes next? Uh, and for me, I was, I was seven years old when I was saved. I was eight years old when I was baptized. And so then I've got another 10 years before I'm out of high school. Uh, and, and then you've got college. After that, if you go to college, it's not so much important as it used to be, I guess. But, uh, but what... What are you supposed to do as a, as a child of God? How are you supposed to grow? And I, and, and I, I call it my, uh, my cheating years because, uh, you know, it's not always the best. And sometimes, especially for me, uh, being a, a kid who grew up in the church, was going to church no matter what because my parents were going to make me go uh, one way or the other. Um, sometimes you can take advantage of things. And, and let me, I'll tell you a story about cheating in my life. Uh, not me cheating. I'm sure I cheated at some point or did something that was considered cheating. But let me, let me tell you a, a funny story. Uh, and Drew loves this story. He turns around now because he's like, oh, you're telling that story. Uh, when I was in high school, my senior year, I took, and I, it was either AP Eng, uh, chemistry or physics. And it was an honors class. And you may be thinking, why is Chris taking an honors class? Well... When you took five honors classes, you got tassels to wear at graduation. And so I was taking enough classes so I could wear tassels so that when I walked around across the stage, I could twirl them. Doesn't sound as cool now, but it sure did then. Uh, and so I took this physics class or chemistry, whatever it was. It was a class that I shouldn't have been in uh, because, well, not only is it science, but it incorporates math with letters. And me and those things do not go well together. I can handle numbers, but don't put letters in there. And so I'm in this class, and all of the smart people are in this class, and me. Uh, and when I say all of the smart people, three years worth of valedictorians at our high school, all of the National Honor Society, and then a guy who GPA was lower than three. Um, so, yes, I... Not qualified to be in there, but that's, you know, to be truthful, that's where the pretty girls were. Um, and so if you, it's just the wise, if you're, if you're a guy, 
take the classes with the pretty girls. Not only can they help you with their work, but it also puts you around them. Uh, but we had a substitute teacher, and on the day that we had this substitute teacher, we had a test. Um, did I study for it? I don't remember. But before the class was a study period. And so what I did is I took all my stuff, I put it in the classroom, and I looked over it at one of the uh, science places where you can do experiments and stuff. See, I don't even know what it's called. Um, all of the people and all the smart people are huddled around and they're studying. Not me. I, leave, I put my stuff down, I leave the class, and I go hang out with my friends. Um, I come back, I take the test, um, substitutes in there, I, I, I take the test, and it was multiple choice, so um, that helped me out a little bit. As soon as we're done with the class, we have lunch. So I leave the class and my sister comes running up behind me and she's, my sister's smart. She's also very, you know, goody two shoes. You know, she's gonna do what's right and I will never blame her for that. And she's great for that. But she comes running up behind me and she's, Chris, did you cheat on that test? And I looked at her like, what? Cheat on that test? Why would I cheat on that test? I don't, and no, I didn't cheat on the test, and I went about my business, I went to class. Well, I come to find out from my sister that everybody else in the class had cheated. Do I blame them for cheating? You know, back then, I probably wouldn't have blamed them for cheating. Um, was it right? No. Uh, does it matter now? No, not so much. Uh, but at that point in time, uh, it becomes a funny story because I made a 64 on that test and 64 is failing. It's a, it's an, it's, it's, it's an F really. If you think about it, it anything below a C was failing, but it would have kept my grade. Well, my overall grade for the class is fine. Well, my sister was so mad that everybody cheated that, you know, the art teacher asked her, well, why are you upset? And so, she tells her, and well, the art teacher lets the science teacher know, hey, here's what, here's what happened. And instead of calling the class out, she, she has one of the extremely smart uh, young ladies in the class come up to the board to work one of the problems from the test on the board, and she can't do it. She got it right on the test, but she can't do it there. And so um, then instead of just saying, well, everybody cheated, so we're, you know, you all failed, she just gives us another test and that one doesn't count and this test becomes a you have to work your problems out and show your work and that does not go well for me um i did that test and i don't think very many other people passed it i think they got or they might have got c's or b's or d's or whatever but i got an eight Lucy starts to laugh a little bit there. Yes, I got an eight on a test my senior year of high school, and it caused me to fail the class for the six weeks and not be able to run track. Now, I tell that story, and I t I've told that story to a lot of kids before because what there's, there's two things there. One, cheating affects everyone around you. I mean, it doesn't just affect you but it affects everyone around you. Plus, you are missing out on knowing and learning everything that you could, okay? Now, what does that have to do with my 10 years of life in between baptism and graduating from high school? Well, I kind of look back and I go, I cheated myself in those that time because I didn't do all that I could have done. Now, were there really good moments in my growth with, with Christ in, the, in those years? Yes. But there were a lot of years where I just coasted. Uh, and, and so, in a, in, a, in, a, in a sense, I cheated myself from growth in the Word of God, in learning how to pray, and learning how to study, and learning how to, to witness or evangelize to people. Uh, and so not only did I, I cheat myself in that time, but because I cheated myself in that time, 
and cheated others out of the, something that God may have been wanting to do there. And so we've got to be very careful, even today, that we don't cheat ourselves out of what God wants to do. Don't just coast. Don't just try and get by. But do everything that we can do to follow God and study his word and be involved in the lives of others so that no one is missing out on the glory and the fullness of what God has to offer us. He doesn't want us to miss out. And it can affect us greatly in the future and the lives of others. Now, God's going to get done what God wants to get done. But don't you want to be used by him? I don't want to miss out on it anymore. And so I try not to cheat myself anymore. Uh, it doesn't mean I don't still have bad moments, but I try not to cheat myself anymore. Thanks for coming tonight. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night sometime between 6.30 and 7.30. And uh, we will uh, uh, see how the first day of school goes for these kiddos. Have a good night. Merry Christmas.